we are here inside of Blender and I'd like to show you how to create this look from scratch. So not just how to create the gold material, but also how to light it as well. Okay, so let's go and create a new file. Okay, our default cube is selected, pressing X and delete to get rid of it. Let's go up to add mesh torus. Okay, zooming in a little just here, we can see that by default, this torus is looking a little rough, it's a little chunky. Now having just added a shape, notice you'll see an add option just down here. Now if I click on that, this will show you the properties used to generate this object. Now this is still live. So where it says minor segments, I'm going to change 12 to 30, press enter or return, and you can see suddenly this thing is looking much, much smoother. Okay, I'm going to click on add torus just to close that down. And with the torus selected, right mouse click and choose shade smooth. Okay, so we've got ourselves a nice smooth donut looking thing just now. Okay, let's start coloring this thing. I'm going to come over to the panels on the right just here. Let's open those up a little actually. And let's come down to the properties panel just here. And the second icon from the bottom is the material properties panel. Now, sometimes it depends on what shape you are working on. This will already be populated with options. In this case, this is a new object with no options. So if I just click on the word new, those options will appear. Okay, so if I come down to base color and I change it to something yellowy, orangey, goldy like just here, don't worry, you don't have to nail it just now. We can easily change this later. Now, yes, I've changed the color, but I'm not seeing a change just here because I want to come to the four buttons in the upper right corner just here. Now, the second one is on by default, and that is the solid mode for this viewport shading. Now, if I go and click on the fourth one just here, that is the rendered view, and that gives you the lighting that you would see if you actually went up to render, render image. So now we can see that this thing is indeed starting to become gold-like in appearance. Okay, it's more a flat orange, we're getting there, don't worry. So, We've already changed the base color. Let's scroll up. There's an option here for metallic. Now I'm gonna to start to drag this up and you'll see the reflections are starting to change on this thing. Now I wanna push the metallic nice and high. I'm going to change that to 0.95. I'm actually just typing that in. Now this is looking pretty good, but there's a second option you want to play with and that's the roughness one. Now if I start to bring this down, as the object gets smoother, these reflections start to get sharper and more intense. Now that might be a little low. Tell you what, I'm just gonna bring this up to 0.3 just now, and we'll probably revisit that a little bit later. So in summary so far guys, all we've done is change the base color. We've pushed the metallic value nice and high, and I've brought the roughness down relatively low. Okay, so this is looking pretty good, but it's not great. I might zoom out a little just here. So you might be thinking, okay, well, maybe what we need to do is add some more lights. So I've got a single light just here. I'm going to select it. If I press Shift D just now, I can move out a copy and then just click my left mouse button to commit that. I'll press Shift D again, drag out another light, and click with my left mouse button to commit that. So let's zoom in and move around a little bit. Now that's definitely helped a lot. We've got some pretty cool reflections going on just here, but it's still not looking as great as my first example. So here's the big takeaway with metallic objects here, guys. You can add lots of lights and they look kind of cool, but they don't really start to look metallic until they're actually reflecting other things in their surfaces. That's what makes them really, really pop. So that's what we're going to do just now. So down here in the properties panel again, you've got this little world properties tab just here. It's the one with the little red globe on it. So if I click on that, there's a color option just here, which is set to gray. And there's a little dot next to that gray color chip. I'm clicking on the dot, and we're going to add an environment texture. Everything goes pink, don't worry, nothing's wrong. We're going to load in an image in just a second. And actually, I'm just going to jump over into my browser for a second just here, because there's an excellent website you should know about. It's uh, hdrihaven.com. There's lots of fantastic HDRI images you can download. Guys, I'm just going to semi-gloss over this, but another video which takes a bit of a deeper dive into this if you want. And all I did was, do a little bit of a search and I found this cool image just here. And if I scroll down a little, you can see it's Urban Alley 01. 
And once you found an image you like, you then just download whichever version you like. In this case, I just downloaded the 2K version and save that to my desktop. Okay, so back here inside of Blender, we are now going to load in that image and use that to light our scene. So remember a moment ago, we added an environment texture via the little dot just there. So now if I click on open, I'll go to my desktop. There's that HDRI image I downloaded. Choose open image and check this out. Now when I move around, you can see it's wrapping that image around the entire scene. But also look at what's going on with the lighting on our torus. So this is already starting to look much, much better. Now, of course, you might not want to see the image which is lighting our scene. So I'll show you how to turn that off just now. So if we come up to the render properties just here, so one that looks like the back of a digital SLR camera, and if we then come down to the film section, I'm going to activate the transparent option and check it out. The image drops away, but its lighting still remains. Okay, so this is looking pretty cool. We're not quite there yet. Oh, one thing I do want to point out here, guys. Yes, we've added a HDRI environment texture, but the lights, which we added earlier, are still in play. So notice if I turn these off, so you can see that is the result of just the HDRI lighting just there. But as I start to turn these lights on, you can see their influence just there. So you don't have to use lights on top of your HDRI image, but you can if you wish to. And I might just leave these on here just because it gives some nice extra highlights. Okay, so again, guys, this is looking pretty good, but it's not quite popping as much as I would like. And I would actually just really like to increase the contrast on this thing. And there's a great way you can increase the contrast on your lighting without actually having to mess around with the lighting. And to do that, you again want to be in the render properties section within the properties panel just over here. And if you come down to the color management section just here, there's an option here for look. Now by default, it's set to none and there are multiple contrast settings just in here. If you set it to medium, it should look pretty much how it does just now. But there are options for very low contrast, which eh, gives us a drab look, which is of course not what we want. I'm going to bump this up to very high contrast. Maybe that's a little too high. I'll bring that back to high contrast. And that's looking pretty great indeed. Very nice. Okay guys, so we are pretty much done at this point just here. But what I might do is just go up to our render, render image, and let's see what this looks like through our camera. And that's looking pretty great. Obviously I might want to change my composition just here, but guys, I am pretty happy with that result just there. Oh, actually one, uh, one thing I should remind you of course is, uh, all of these settings are dynamic. So if I click back on our object just here, and let's go back into the material properties just here. So these are the options we set at the beginning. And I might revisit quickly the roughness option just here. So it's currently set to 0.3. I'm going to bring that all the way to the left, bringing it down to zero and check this out. This is basically just now a mirrored surface. So it's basically an orange tinted mirror. And you can see it's reflecting that HDRI environment texture. So uh, it depends on how metallic you want the surface to look. You can actually start to mess with this roughness value. And as I start to bring up the roughness, you can see those reflections start to get more blurred. So let's try a value of say uh, 0.25 for the roughness. That's looking pretty cool. And uh, let's say for example, you thought that was too orange a look for our gold. So just go back to your base color, click on the chip just there, and you can dial in a different value. So that's one a little bit more yellow and maybe, okay, that's what pink rose gold could potentially look like, not bad. We could do something in the blues, the teals, the greens. Let's go and find a good value for orange just there. Oh, and uh, a nice little bonus tip here, guys. If you're trying to make something silver, of course, silver is basically devoid of color, right? So the easiest way to achieve that is just to come into the uh, values just here. The S value just here stands for saturation. If you just drag that all the way to the left, you can see that sucks all of the color out of that base color just there. In this case, let's set it back to something more like our gold just there. And I might wrap things up just there. I hope that wasn't too meandering there, guys. But that's how you can create a gold material here inside of Blender and then light it with a HDRI environment texture. I hope that helps. Catch you later.